when you go down there, it it's almost like ethereal. It's so quiet. All you can hear is the submersible that you're in. And of course, it's dark because there's no light past 400 meters. And you're just surrounded by all of these weird and amazing animals that are adapted to live in this incredibly extreme environment. My name is Diva Raymond, and I'm a deep sea biologist. I'm currently based at the Natural History Museum in London, but I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago. There are very few careers that allow you to be amongst the first people on the planet to see something. And that's what we do as deep sea scientists. We are always finding new species, new habitats, new behaviors. So little of it has been explored. I mean, we really cannot answer that incredibly basic question of what lives there for most of our oceans. Deep sea biologists like Diva find out about the species and habitats of what lie beneath by sending robots or autonomous vehicles to gather information on their behalf. Or, on rare occasions, she gets to go down there herself in a submersible. With one tiny round window per person to look out from, it's like a human-sized washing machine. You do get a perspective that you don't get from using any other type of equipment. It's small, and you can't stand it's that small. I mean, of course, I think it's totally normal to be nervous before going down to somewhere where no one can come and rescue you if something goes wrong. You start to descend and all of that worry sorts of goes away because you're glued to the window, this tiny six inch sphere window. As you pass through the sort of twilight zone, there's just the most amazing bioluminescence. Like fireworks going off outside the window just constantly for about half an hour of every color, shape, description. Before you know it, you're on the deep sea floor. A big part of Diva's work is to understand the threats that the creatures of the deep are facing. Given that resources on land and in shallow waters are dwindling, we now know that certain areas of the deep sea may be targeted for certain types of exploitation. So we can begin to think about what might be endangered, but there are very few animals in deep sea that we can categorically say are endangered. One deep sea species that Diva and her team have studied is the scaly foot deep sea gastropod, also known as the scaly foot snail, or sea pangolin. The snail is really remarkable because it has the largest heart to body ratio of any animal on the planet. It's, the heart is about 4% of its entire body. For comparison, humans is about just over 1%. Because it lives in this metal-rich environment, it uses a lot of those metals to create these scales that cover its foot. And it, it literally looks like it's wearing a sheet of armor. It has these bacteria within its body that uses the chemicals coming out of the seafloor where it lives to make its food. The scaly foot snail lives in places we've only just discovered and find almost impossible to get to. And yet, that doesn't stop us causing havoc. We know that one is endangered because they're only found in four tiny areas in the Indian Ocean. Three of those four areas are actually found in leases where deep sea mining may occur in the future. It's the first deep sea species to be added to the red list, the IUCN's list of endangered animals, as a result of deep sea mining. Now that scientists know they're down there, they can monitor them more effectively. Mining hasn't happened yet, but we can say that if it does, those animals are of the most vulnerable. The things you find on the ocean floor aren't all as remarkable as the scaly foot snail. Nearly every expedition I've been on, we see remnants of us. Last year, I was with the NOAA ship Oceanus Explorer, and we were working in the Gulf of Mexico, in places of the Gulf of Mexico that no one had been to yet. And we had identified this target in our sonar, which looked a lot like a shipwreck. It was about 40 feet long, and they had what looked like a debris field around it. And that's like a characteristic thing of a shipwreck. And we had bets going on board, like how old it would be, what it might have been used for. And as we got clearer, we were like, what the heck? And it turns out it was a shipping container 
that had obviously fallen off of a ship in the process been ripped to open and that debris field was washing machines, fridges, freezers, like dishwashers, just scattered all over the seafloor. And it was the most surreal experience to be working at over one and a half kilometers depth in the deep sea, a part of the deep sea that no one had been to yet, and we're driving through household appliances. It was just this very surreal experience. The deep sea is so fundamental to us being here. It is absolutely important for these huge global processes that keep our planet habitable. It sequesters carbon and it absorbs heat, plays a massive role in climate regulation. Without our oceans, we would not be able to live here because our planet would be so hot. It cycles nutrients, it detoxifies our seas, and it inspires us. That's something that people forget. And I think if, you know, the deep sea were to go away, we wouldn't be looking at a very bright future at all. <laughs>